Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Today, my guest is Sam Bandley from eSpring Investments. Sam is a senior client portfolio manager, and today we want to discuss recent developments in Japanese stock markets. Welcome, Sam. Thank you. So, Sam, how has Japanese stock market performed since the outbreak of COVID-19 early this year? Well, as with all equity markets this year, it's been a pretty volatile period for Japanese equities. Um, you know, early in the year, the first quarter, we saw a lot of emotional um, responses to the outbreak of the COVID virus. And that really drove a very narrow, emotionally driven market in, in, in Japan. And the defensive market, defensive part of the market there um, outperformed. Um, in the second part, the second quarter of the year um, and through um, to more recently, following the uh, announcement of the significant um, uh, monetary and fiscal policy support, um, we've then seen some of the less of the defensive, but more of a rotation away from defensive into these pockets of, of growth. And so investors have been looking for more growthy stocks. They've been tending to chase the more expensive uh, uh, tech sector. Um, and so the tech sector has performed very well um, since then, and the and financials, cyclical financials part has underperformed. Japanese equities are still underwater year to date, um, but we think that actually offers um, quite a few attractive opportunities. So how have valuations and profits of Japanese companies developed since the recovery in, in March? Well, obviously, there's been a, a clear and significant impact on profitability um, and valuations um, through this period. But you know, the rest of the rest of the outlook for the rest of the year is, is quite uncertain. You know, you know, Japan corporate Japan was actually pretty well placed coming into this virus outbreak. Um, some very strong balance sheets, pretty cash um, cash generative. Um, and so, you know, actually pretty sort of, we think can be quite resilient, but there's a couple of things we're sort of considering there is really, you know, from a corporate perspective, what are the balance sheets like? How flexible are they? How responsive can they be to the situation going forward? Um, so it's really quite stock specific um, in, our, in our view. But in terms of valuations, um, we still see lots of valuation opportunities, absolute terms. Japan remains attractive. It was attractive at the start of the year. It's still attractive now. But there's a huge dispersion between the expensive tech end of the market, um, the, where the growth names are sitting, where there's been a lot of preference for that sector, as I mentioned earlier. Um, at the other end, you've got the, sort of the, the, finan the cyclical financials, the autos, which remain very cheap, and which, remain, which we see sort of offering a lot of attractive valuations over the medium term. So Japan had some problems with corporate governance in the, in the past, and the government has put this on the agenda for the, for the last couple of years. So what has changed in Japan since that? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, Japan has this reputation for um, poor corporate governance. And um, it's over the last eight years, it has been very much a focus of the government. But really, actually, what we've seen is that you know, corporate Japan realized the necessity to improve corporate governance. Um, so there's pressure both internally within the um, corporations, but also externally from um, the government, from regulators, and also from shareholders, domestics, the large domestic shareholders in, in Japan. And so the combination of these things have actually made some, uh, has led to um, corporate Japan making some very substantial changes and now making um, a lot of better decisions around capital allocation. You know, we're seeing a lot more dividends um, being paid out, a lot more buybacks being made. Um, and a real focus on shareholder value. So we think this positive sort of direction and shift in um, directional change is important um, and will last through the cycle. In the near term, COVID puts a bit of pressure on that. You know, maybe in the near term, some of the share buybacks get um, held back, but we are still seeing some um, and we are still seeing corporate action and corporate activity in Japan. So we don't think there's a long-term impact from COVID on this positive trend of improving corporate governance. So what is currently the case for Japanese equities and in which areas do you as a portfolio manager find investment opportunities? Well, first and foremost for us, Japan, Japanese equities are attractively valued. As I touched on, you know, from an absolute level, you know, when we think about whether it's price to book or earnings yield, um, Japanese equities look cheap relative to history and also relative to the rest of the world. And this is when we've already seen some improvement in earnings. So we think that actually, you know, 
first and foremost, valuations are important. Secondly, you know, corporate Japan has come into this environment in a pretty good shape, you know, with strong balance sheets. They've been seeing a lot of restructuring, focusing on uh, businesses, focusing on earnings, focusing on shareholder value creation. Um, so we think that corporate Japan has, has, has come into this environment pretty well placed um, with strong balance sheets and improving ROEs. But it's so, you know, corporate Japan um, is, is healthy. Generically, you know, across the economy, we think the markets are pretty tight. The labor market is pretty firm. Um, and we're seeing, um, we're seeing quite a benign outlook, I would say, for um, the foreign exchange market as well. So yen um, has a pretty um, sort of benign outlook. So we think all in all, um, that sort of offers an attractive environment for Japan. Now, if in terms of where do we see opportunities, you know, again, we've seen this big dispersion in, um, in valuations um, through this really over the last 18 months, where you've seen the expensive end of the market get quite expensive and the cheap end of the market remain quite cheap. So we're seeing opportunities in, in stock specific um, opportunities in, in some financial stocks. Um, it's consumer stops and specialist materials and even in the pharma space, but we don't own the expensive popular names in that space. We tend to own the less known, less loved, um, cheaper um, names where we can see attractive valuations. So in the discussion about global technology leadership, um, Chinese and US companies dominate the international agenda. Mm. But What about the often quoted J Japanese innovation power? So are they undervalued? Yeah, so absolutely underquoted. I think we think this is a little bit you know, where the investor biases are driving valuations are also driving this, the, the dialogue. And, um, and yes, you know, we, we actually still, still see that Japanese um, tech companies are sort of at the leading edge of global peers, particularly in semiconductor materials and, and production space. And, and so you know, for us, it's really key yeah, what, what's priced in. Um, you know, there are lots of expensive parts of the tech market, and most of those are the ones you'll be hearing about in the headlines. And um, those are sort of um, a lot of those in, in the US and Japan and in the US and China. But there are expensive tech stocks in Japan as well. So, you know, for us, again, it's about anchoring ourselves on valuation um, and trying to avoid these very expensive stocks that can give you a headwind in terms of capital preservation. And so we're very much thinking about valuation as a starting point. And, and we have, you know, we do have some tech exposure in the portfolio that we've held for some time. Um, but again, not in the, the popular um, expensive end of the market. This was Sam Bentley from Eastburn Investments. Thank you very much for being with us today, Sam, and sharing your views. Thank you very much.